This video starts off with me piloting the P-47 Thunderbolt with two bandits closing feet wet off my 10 o'clock high to my north. I initially didn't see the second bandit, but I did catch the one further west, left in this case, out of the corner of my eye. Here's some zoom so you can see him better. I'm forced to make a decision at this point. Either I dive, using the P-47 superior straight and level speed to mostly all Japanese aircraft, or I climb to continue to build my potential energy, which I can later convert to kinetic energy. I choose to climb from 3,500 to 6,500 feet or thereabouts, putting me at co-altitude with the bandits. The first bandit begins to turn in, closing fast off my left wing. I do a double take and see this maneuver, anticipate it, and turn into his attack, which when being bounced by a higher energy opponent you always want to do. At this point in development, the Tony was a UFO, and you can see the insane horizontal turn here he does to just instantly get on my 6. So at this point, my goal is strictly to outrun the Tony. I know I won't be able to outturn him, but I do have greater dive speed and maneuverability, so I try to spoil his shot while waiting for the right time to dive. Thankfully, as I look over my shoulder, I see the Tony pull off. A friendly Spitfire joined the fight and distracts the Tony, giving me just the opportunity I need to turn the tables on this bandit. Now, normally it would be a bad idea to chase Tony to the ground and lose all that energy I had built up, but in those bursts you just saw, I actually scored a fair number of hits. None of them were blatantly critical, but I know they hit some important bits of his plane, putting me in the position of advantage. His maneuver to evade the spit also bled a lot of his energy. What you see here, however, is important. Take note of how I don't try to follow his turn. Instead, I offset in lag pursuit to further increase our separation. This allows me to retain energy while still tracking the target and allows me to use yo-yos to turn back into him if the opportunity is there. Unfortunately, he turns too tightly, so I extend from him, keeping an eye on him by leaning around my seat, which you can't see in the replay, sadly. I don't exactly want to give a play-by-play, -play, but you can see here that I chop my throttle because I don't want to overshoot on a plane that can turn so quickly, and I start chasing him. He tries to put me in horizontal scissors, which I'm having no part of. I maintain my separation and try to shoot at him as he crosses in front of my plane. Some teammates are calling for help on the opposite side of the AO, but won't respond to me asking for their altitude, so I'm left to guess. I spend the time going to their location, climbing, to rebuild the lost potential energy that I had spent getting that first kill. You can see I'm constantly scanning to maintain situational awareness, lest I get bounced again.
I got lucky and found one bandit, so I take a high deflection shot at him. My luck ran out though. That one bandit is actually two. I take the opportunity for another high deflection shot and miss again. Now knowing there are two bandits, I have to extend so I don't lose energy. But as I pass by for that shot, I identify a friendly on the tail of that bandit. Knowing that I'm in a superior energy state to all bandits in this fight, I decide to turn back around and go for the kill. That was picture perfect. I got him just beyond my conversions, but I'm not safe yet. Pay attention to the tip of my right wing near the ground of that group of trees. Japanese tracers and a friendly calling for help repeatedly. I immediately turn in. I'm not able to save him, but I do avenge him and get my third kill with a high deflection shot. Nothing too interesting happens here. I continue to scan and gain altitude, so I'll cut the footage until I see something. Getting that bomber was kill number four. It was hard to see when moving so fast, but that plane was riddled with holes, which is why I didn't set up for a second pass. I knew all gunners in it were dead, so I could have easily come back for one or more passes, but I didn't see the need. Again, I'll cut the footage to get to the next interesting part. Directly off my left wing, slightly high, you can see a dot, an enemy plane. All friendlies were out of fuel at this point, returning to base or shot down, so it seemed unusual to me that a friendly would be that far out. I turn into investigating and provide cover for my retreating allies.
If there was any doubt that this was an enemy fighter, that doubt is gone. The area we are flying over is now friendly, yet as the flak near me starts to taper off, it continues to shoot at him. I now know that he's heading to our airfield to attack landing aircraft, and I have to do something about it. I identify his plane as a captured Corsair, which is notorious for its inability to see its six. I move in directly on a six, knowing that I'll be faster than him, if only slightly, and he will not be able to see me. The chase continues for a while, until... Another picture perfect kill, and that does it for this mission. Oh, 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 oh,